Okay, uh, example three. This time we have four terms. We have six letters. Um, the number of letters really, I mean, the only thing it does is makes you have to write more stuff down, but they're all basically the same difficulty level. Um, if there were parentheses, we'd deal with that, but there aren't, so we just deal with the fraction issue. The least common denominator of all the fractions is nx or xn. Take your pick, however you want to write it. Once again, I've got to multiply nx times every piece. This time there's four pieces, so I'm going to do nx times a over x nx times negative y, nx times m over n, and run out of colors here. Pink. nx times k. All right? So when I do nx times a over x, x cancels x, leave me with a n. When I do nx times negative y, that's not a fraction. That's not a fraction. Nothing cancels, so I get minus nxy. When I do nx times m over n, the n's cancel. m times x makes positive mx. And when I do nx times k, there's no fractions there, so I'm just going to get k and x. Again, pay attention to signs as you do it. I'm multiplying a positive every time, so the signs stay what they were. So positive stays positive, negative stays negative, positive stays positive. All right. Once we get to this point, once again, we just get a bunch of terms. There's no fractions. There's no parentheses. Everything's as simple as it can possibly get. Now, it's just a matter of identification of things. Anything containing x matters more than anything else. So, this has x in it, this has x in it, and this has x in it. All right. So, those three things have to go together. And again, you can pick and choose how you want to do it. I can move the k and x to the left, move a n to the right. That would make it happen, right? All the x's will be on that side. I can move these two guys over to the right, leaving AN where it's at, then all the X's will be on the right. doesn't matter how you do it. I'm going to go ahead and move it to the right. So I end up with AN all by itself on the left-hand side equals KNX on the right-hand side. Those two objects stayed where they were, so they stayed positive. Positive AN, positive KNX. NXY is negative, moves across the equal sign, becomes positive NXY. MX moves across the equal sign, becomes negative MX. And notice this happens sometimes. Notice nx, nx, and sometimes people think, well, those look kind of the same, so maybe we should do something with them. But they don't match exactly. Knx, nxy aren't the same, so there's no like terms there, even though part of it's alike. The k and the y are different, so that you know, doesn't allow us to add them together. x in this term, x in this term, x in this term. Everything x is on the right. There's no x is on the left. Everything's been separated properly, so I'm going to factor the x out on the right-hand side. Kn plus ny minus m is all that's left. Each object reduced by x, so x got taken out, x got taken out, x got taken out. When I take that common factor out, nothing happens to the left-hand side but bring it down anyway. And then again, x is being multiplied by all this stuff. I want all that stuff to disappear, so I simply divide by all that stuff. So divide by Kn plus ny minus m. Do the same to the other side. Kn plus Ny minus M over Kn plus Ny minus M all cancels, leaving all by itself X equals the answer over on the other side. These do become more challenging down the road. Uh, this is as basic as they're going to get for right now, but again, the, the basic theme is get rid of fractions, isolate the variable you care about, factor out the common factor that is that variable, divide by the stuff with it, and go through the process each time. Focus on each step as you do it. Get really good at this. Um, when we get to the uglier ones, they're still going to get to this same point right here every time. It's just a little uglier stuff going on before that. So once we get to here, every problem's about the same. So really focus on your steps. Get good at the process, and these will be pretty easy as we go along.